Today's video is made possible by Brilliant.org. Today we're going to talk a bit about substitutions for evaluating integrals in general, and then more specifically about a certain family of substitutions that generally is not covered in an integral calculus class or a calculus 2 class in the United States. So let's recall that in a Calculus 2 class, you often learn how to integrate functions involving the square root of x squared plus a squared, the square root of a squared minus x squared, or the square root of x squared minus a squared using trigonometric substitutions. That is, you might substitute x equals a tangent theta, a sine theta, or a secant theta. And these all correspond to the following functions being involved within your integral. And you might say, well, why would we do these sort of substitutions in the first place? Well, it turns out that it's because the trig identities are so nice. If you plug in a tangent theta for x inside of this, you get a nice simplification due to the Pythagorean trig identity. And the same thing for the other things. So all in all, they have a very simplifying effect on the function within the integral. But what if you've got something a little bit more complicated? What if you have the square root of x squared plus bx plus c? So uh, like I said, a little bit more complicated of a quadratic function instead of just one of these over here. Well, in that case, in Calculus 2, you're generally taught to complete the square and then use trig functions just like before. So in essence, completing the square turns it into one of these. And then you can do a substitution and then substitute finally for the trig function. But that might be the best way of doing this, but it's definitely not the only way of doing this. And the real study of trigonometric substitution is not really trigonometric substitution, it's simplifying substitution. And it just turns out that trigonometric substitution is a great avenue to study simplifying substitution. But maybe like your real final goal should be able to come up with a substituting function that simplifies whatever integral you're working with. Maybe that substitution is with trigonometric functions and maybe it's with something else. So today what I'd like to do is look at another family of substitutions that will simplify things like this. And thus they'll also simplify things like this over here. And this is often known as an Euler substitution. And so what we'll do is set t equal to the square root of x squared plus bx plus c minus x. So that'll be our substitution. But you might say, well, if t is equal to all of this, then what do I set x equal to? Well, it turns out, even though this seems like pretty gnarly, we can solve it for x fairly easily. So let's do that. Notice this means that x plus t is equal to the square root of x squared plus bx plus c. And now we can easily square both sides in order to get rid of this square root on the right hand side. That'll give us x squared plus 2xt plus t squared over here on the left hand side. I multiplied that out. And then on the right hand side, the square and the square root will cancel, giving us x squared plus bx plus c. And then we can start simplif simplifying. So this x squared here will cancel this x squared here. And then notice we've got exactly one, two terms that involve x's, and then two terms that do not involve x's. Notice we can move some things around. We'll have 2xt minus bx is equal to c minus t squared. We can factor an x out of this left-hand side, leaving us with 2t minus b equals c minus t squared, which tells us that x is equal to c minus t squared over 2t minus b. So something like that. 
Okay, so that's x in terms of t, but that means we can also write this square root of x squared plus bx plus c in terms of t as well. So let's note that. So note in this setup, we have the square root of x squared plus bx plus c. Well, like I said before, it's x plus t, but we can use this value for x. And so that'll be c minus t squared over 2t minus b plus t. So plus t. But we might as well give t a common denominator, this denominator being 2t squared minus, or 2t minus b. That gives us 2t squared minus bt over 2t minus b. And now we can put those things together, and what will we have? Well, we'll have t squared minus bt plus c over 2t minus b. So that's your substitution for this square root object. Okay, but let's also notice that there will be something involving a dx term because we're going to do an integral at some point. So we need to calculate dx in terms of dt. And we can do that by taking the derivative of this using the quotient rule. So maybe I'll leave that as a bit of an exercise for you just because it's fairly straightforward, but it ends up being the following minus two times uh, t squared minus bt plus c over 2t minus b quantity squared dt. So we end up with something like that. So I think that's pretty interesting because it's pretty similar to this square root. So let's look at a little bit of a summary at this point. So the substitution that we'll make, which is motivated by setting t equal to this, is x equals c minus t squared over 2t minus b, which turns this square root object into this rational function of t, and it turns dx into also this rational function of t. So that means we'll start with something that involves the square root of x squared plus bx plus c, and this will turn it into some sort of rational function where t is the variable. Okay, so now that we've like motivated this situation, let's like look at an example. Hang on there. Before we continue, I want to tell everyone about today's wonderful sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a powerful learning tool and the creators understand that a visual hands-on approach can be key for making concepts click. Brilliant is constantly updating its library of learning content, which means there's always more to learn. You can explore a variety of topics at any skill level. Brilliant will support you at every every step of the way. Brilliant has mathematics content all the way from elementary arithmetic all the way to differential equations, and it even includes abstract algebra as well as techniques for math contests. In addition, Brilliant has courses in physics, computer science, and more. Gradually master whole topics in as little as 15 minutes a day and learn anywhere, anytime, on your phone, tablet, or computer. Brilliant makes learning more like a game, with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others. Others. I recently used the resources as inspiration in my Calculus 2 class, and it gave me some really great ideas that helped my students grasp the graphical interpretation of integrals. But we're scientists here, so you should test it for yourself by going to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn to treat yourself to a unique hands-on experience, a 30-day free trial, and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Now we're going to look at an example. Example. And just to remind ourselves that substitution was called Euler substitution. So we're going to look at the integral of the function 1 over x times the square root of x squared plus 3x plus 1. And let's recall these were the parts of our Euler substitution. So notice in this setup we have b equal to 3 and we have c equal to 1. So that's what we'll keep in mind as we do this calculation. Okay, so let's 
just note that we will take x in this case to be one minus t squared over, so we'll have two t minus three. So that's our substitution in this setting. And then after making that substitution for x, we will populate the rest of these parts. Okay, so let's see what this turns into. So we'll have the integral of, so let's put our dx term in the numerator first. So that will be minus two, and then we'll have t squared uh, minus three t plus one all over, that'll be two t minus three, quantity squared dt. Okay, so we've taken care of just this differential x term. Now let's take care of the x term. So that'll be one over t squared over two t minus three. Okay, and then let's take care of the square root term. So the square root term has this form. So that's gonna be t squared minus 3t plus one all over 2t minus three. Okay, so now let's maybe color code what's going on here just so that it's super clear. So this thing that I'm boxing in green turns into this green boxed thing in the substituted integral. This dx term, which I'll box in blue, turns into all of this in the substituted integral. And then finally, this square root object, which I'm boxing in purple, will turn into this bit that I box in purple in the substituted integral. But now we'll see that we get quite a bit of simplification. And that's kind of where the magic happens here. Notice that we've got a 2t minus 3 and a 2t minus 3 in the denominator of the denominator. And we have a 2t minus 3 squared in the denominator of the numerator. Well, those will cancel. So this and this double up to cancel this whole term here. Okay, so that's off to a good start. And then we have this t squared minus 3t plus 1 and this t squared minus 3t plus 1, which will also cancel. And now notice we're not left with very much. We have negative two dt over one minus t squared. So we could maybe bring the two out and change the sign to change the order of subtraction. That leaves us with dt over t squared minus one. But now we can do a standard partial fraction decomposition of that object. So I'll maybe leave that for you and we'll just jump to that is two times the integral of one over t minus one minus one over t plus one dt. But those two have very simple antiderivatives involving natural logs. So we have two times the natural log of the absolute value of t minus one minus the natural log of the absolute value of t plus one. So we can put this together and we'll have two times the natural log of t minus one over t plus one. But now we can substitute back in for t. And I didn't have room over here to rewrite what t was in terms of x. We had that at the start of our calculation on the last board. So I'll just maybe recall that now. That will give us two times the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of x squared plus three x plus one minus x minus one. So this square root of stuff minus x was what t was by our substitution. And then we'll have that same thing in the denominator but with a plus one. So the square root of x squared plus three x plus one minus x plus one. And then I guess we need a plus a constant too because this is an indefinite integral. So that would be our final calculation. So in this video, we looked at a nice substitution, which has a simplifying effect, yet it's not often taught in an integral calculus class. Maybe you have your favorite non-standard substitution as well that you think should be in an integral calculus class. Maybe share it with us in the comments, and that's a good place to stop. 
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.